I I have a question. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yeah, bring it on. Travis, congratulations to you, my man. I appreciate oh, yeah. that. Thank you. Uh, give us give us a quick segment on uh, you know how, how your qualifier went, and you know I I read your article today, or at least most of it, until my little man uh, distracted me. <laughs> um, <laughs> give me uh, give me the you know thirty second to minute uh, update on how the qualifier went and how it felt to to make it through and and qualify for your first event. I mean, it, it felt like you know exactly as I expected it to, you know, you just, it's almost like that kind of a a Christmas morning feeling where it's, you know, it's great for a couple hours and then you're like, okay, well, you know, that's it. You know, it's now it's (laughs) it's December 26th and we're moving on. And and I knew that that's how it would be. The feedback and response that I got that night, um, you know, when I, by the time I got back to the player's tent, you know, I had like 50 texts and phone calls and messages from like players that, that I respected and looked up to like Ty Trambley, I think was the first one to text me. And, and then just like guys like that, it was, it was awesome. It was funny because like just being in the player's tent, like I felt like almost every, like everyone's kids, like kid brother. Cause like everyone, it seemed like was kind of rooting for me to make it through. Um, oh, yeah. and then, and then I did it and you know, they were all really happy to, at the same time. I feel like, you know, they, they could be really happy because they, they know that I'm not a threat to win just yet. (laughs) Like (laughs) little brother can't knock off big bro yet. So uh, that's kind of the next step. Well, Austin is over, which is really unfortunate because Austin, uh, Austin was like everything that was awesome in life. I mean, I made the, I had the best athletic accomplishment that I've ever had when I made a main draw. And then I wrote a story about qualifying, and that actually probably got more, you know, feedback and kind words than actually qualifying did. And just want to thank everybody for like anyone who reached out, either about qualifying or the story. Like it was awesome. I mean, it was, it was like the the greatest experience. Not just making it through, but just everyone texting congratulations and support, and then afterwards sharing the story and just reaching out through Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Like y'all made my day. And everything was going great and it was awesome. And then I got dumped. So I made it through with Rafi Paulus and we had a, a great tournament. We played really well. And then I texted him on the Friday uh, after Austin. So we still had maybe three days before we had to register. I said, yo, like, are we still running New York? And then he said, call me. And if you've ever been in a relationship, this is like your girlfriend texting you like, we need to talk. You know it's not going to be a great conversation. So Rafi ended up picking up Brandon Clemens. So this whole mess was started because Ben Vaught, who played with Clemens, dropped Clemens for Jeff Samuels. And Clemens had previously run a tournament with Rafi and they won in Hermosa together. So when Clemens called Rafi, it was kind of a no-brainer for him, which makes total sense. Clemens is 6'7", I'm 6'4". Clemens played, was an All-American at Harvard, and I was really good at Flip Cup in college. What's, with. what's Flip Cup? Flip Cup's a, a drinking game. Because I have American drinking game. So Clemens has made five main draws, I've made one. There are a lot of reasons that Rafi would have picked Clemens over me, but that doesn't mean that I wasn't butthurt about it. And so two days later, I was practicing with Eric Zahn against Chase Freshman and Avery Drost. And I was talking to Chase about it, and he said, well, how do you feel about it? And I said, well, at first, you know, I was pretty butthurt about it. And I hoped that Rafi, because he moved up in the points, got the worst draw in the history of qualifier draws. But then I also had another feeling that I really wanted to play Rafi and knock him out of the tournament that he dropped me for. So Chase kind of said something that was super simple, but it kind of blew my mind. He said, well, why don't you just be the bad draw? But now for the next week and a half, I have to figure out, so how can I make myself turn into a bad draw? So he got me ready for Austin. <laughs> and because I made main draw, he has to get me ready to New York, which is why I dragged him out here at six in the morning. I'm the sole reason of his success. Exactly. Just 100% because of me. So, Joel. Yes. Three biggest things that I needed to work on from Austin to New York. Um, I know I thought you did really good in Austin, so this is a hard question. Um, <laughs> you're always working on your passing. Always working on the passing. You're trying to freeze your angle more. That's it. Um, you're trying to freeze your angle more. John Mayer, words of wisdom. You're trying to swing more. Yes. So swing swinging, the, the high deep angle swings. Yeah. That worked in Laguna a 
against Taylor Crab and uh, and Chase Buttinger. Whenever I tried to shoot, Chase uh, Chase blocked it pretty straight down. So that was the point of emphasis number one. Mm -hmm. Number two was those small scramble plays that we were working on yes. with uh, with Chandler Gibb, Jake's yes. nephew. Yes. Um, so we were doing a lot of scramble stuff. And then number three, always serving. Because I'm a really small block. Joel is a big block. He's 6'7. 6'7? Six, seven. Uh, six, seven? No, I'm 6'6. 6'6. 6'6. 6'6. Play 6'10. So <laughs> his block is a good defense, but my best defense is my serving. So I've just been ripping jump serves and see if we can carry that into New York. Any last words of wisdom? Um, Travis is a good man. <laughs> <laughs> Check out Power Front. There's some good stuff in that bag. You're gonna be happy you want that. Nice job, boys. Alright, everybody, make sure you check out Power Front. There's some good stuff in that bag. You're gonna be happy you want that. Nice job, boys. Let's go. My turn is over. It was uh, a quick one. Um, it, was, it was tough. You know, I was playing with Shane Donahue, who is an unbelievably talented volleyball player, and a phenomenal athlete. And you know, we just we had never practiced before, you know, until the, the day of and we got our asses handed to us, you know, hands down, and it wasn't, you know, we didn't play bad, you know, we, we took care, for the most part, we took care of our end offensively, but we just could not do anything defensively, we, you know, hats off to Marshall Brock and Aaron Rice, they played awesome volleyball, I mean, they, they played really, really well, we just, you know, we lost our first set, I think we were 20 and 14 or 20 and 15, and we sit in the players' box in between sets, Shane was like, you know, I, I, they just were never uncomfortable comfortable and they weren't you know I, I did my block was pretty much non-existent uh, which made it really really hard on Shane to dig a ball and, and the, I think the only time we earned a point was when we got an ace and those are few and far between because you know my serve is, is where I get the majority of my points and I couldn't get it going and that's that's on me and it really wasn't anything due to, to lack of preparation you know I, I hit maybe 50 jump serves the day before and Laguna leading up to it, I just jump serve really well the whole tournament. So it was just one of those days, and sometimes you serve well and sometimes you don't. I didn't, um, and that's you need that, you know. And, and which goes to show that I need more than one defensive weapon. And my blocking was atrocious. You know, I, Shane talked about how he could have dug more balls, maybe he could have, but I didn't make it any easier with how bad my blocking was. The first thing I did was text try right after and I said dude can I send you the film because I need some help with my blocking. Was the worst part about a, a match like that is that you know offensively we were okay. You know in the immediate moments after the match you know, I was like Shane like I'm sorry like I got pretty much every serve. You know Shane got maybe five the whole day. You know I, setting is like probably the, the thing that I do best and I didn't set any balls. So I felt kind of bad but you know I got every serve and if you get every serve and you lose then ultimately it's your fault which kind of was, but you know, I think we sided out at a rate that we, we, we could have won that match. And we just couldn't get it together defensively. And one of the hardest things about losing a match like that is when you, there's no glaring errors. You know, I think we only made maybe three hitting errors the whole time. We missed a couple serves, but you have to for being aggressive. And, and so you don't know immediately what to work on. And I watched the film and it's like, it was painful watching my blocking because it's just, you know, with matches like that, and everyone, was, they came up and they were like, oh, like you played great, like you bounced a bunch of balls, but, it, you know, and I swung well. And, you know, I, I had been working on that, and that's one of the positives I could take away is that I, like, did rip some balls. But then after Austin, you know, I knew that, like, it's not the, the huge bounce plays that, that when you that get you into a main draw. It's, it's just this small microscopic plays that no one notices. It's just dropping your hand in the right spot when you should. And I probably had five, six, seven blocks where I was here, and all I had to do was just drop it. And that's my point, and I didn't, or I didn't drop it enough, and, all, and it just went off my hand. Their point. It's easy, and I just killed Shane. And that's the the toughest part. You have to swallow. You know, I texted my dad. God, this is tough. 
basketball. You can play in sports or not, but you know that. Okay, so yeah, so it's, it's time to get back to work, you know, and now that, you know, just a short drive from home in Maryland, so my parents are coming up to see an AVP tournament, that, you know, I'm going to go home, have some Maryland crabs, get back in the weight room with my brothers, and then, you know, when I get back to California, just back and try to, to teach me how to block a ball, because that was, that was the biggest thing that I didn't do, and it killed Shane, I knew Shane said he didn't dig enough balls, but frankly, no one was digging balls behind that block. Still uh, now I'm in Seattle in two weeks, got to figure out who I'm playing with, got to figure out how to get better, so it's still you know, passing, swinging hot, you know, those work well, but got to get the jumps over more consistent and blocking. You know, if, I, if I seal up my blocking a little bit, you know, that's, that's the difference between losing in the first round and, and pushing it maybe to the round to get in, we don't know. So hopefully in Seattle we'll find out and we'll catch you guys in. Well, I was seriously, again, first, first goddamn lunch date, and... Hey.